As you can see, I am recording. Yes. It's called opening. Um, All together now. Turn, peaks, etc. Uh, Desmond, Rasmus, Penny, Ginger, and Kettle Bowie. Excellent. Who is who? I need to pad this out to about 25 seconds yeah. anyway. I, yeah. I can read it for the for the sake of the uh for Rob. I was gonna say for the audience, but for Rob. And action. Oh Desmond, I, I'm so happy that so many people in our village of Turn Peaks know us as the strongest and most skilled loggers in the area. You are Desmond. Desmond. I am Rasmus, but you are <laughs> correct. That's true. Even our burly builds and years of experience can't prepare us for the terror I am currently feeling. Because guess what, Desmond? Penny's yeah. here with a ter terrifying message. Oh, oh Desmond, she just went... our hearts are pounding with fear, and we can barely breathe. Oh, as we approach Ginger's hut. Oh, uh, we've been summoned to Ginger's hut, by the way. Oh, that's really? why we're terror. That's why we're terrified. I think Penny was supposed to come in and let us know, but... None of that appears in, time... in, in the script. No, time is a circle. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're at the hut. We've, we finally arrived at the hut, but it's also we will never reach it. Really? It's, it's small a... and unassuming, nestled deep in the woods. Yes, and also at the same time, it doesn't exist. Oof, that's spooky stuff. Oh, are you... Is that a worried glance on your face? Yes, is that one on yours? Yes, it is. Raise your fists, it's time to knock on the door. Knock, 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 knock. Creak. Oh, what I can just see inside there, what can you see? I don't know, but it's definitively making my blood run cold, Desmond. Oh, well, I Rasmus. After you, Desmond. Looks like there's a figure sat in that rocking chair. He's surrounded by something. They are surrounded by something. It seems to be strange and eerie. I think it's an aura. Oh, can you hear the radio stations being clicked through real quick? <laughs> Oh yeah, it sounds like uh, our favourite, J. Vernon Pentecost, and our least favourite, his rival, J. Dwight McGee, with 60 minutes of condemnation. Oh, who needs that much condemnation? Surely that's overkill. Exactly. Over overt kill. Precisely. It doesn't seem like she can settle on a station. Oh. What else is in, what's in the corner? Well, over there in the, in the, in the corner, it looks like there's a large kettle. What's he saying? My name. It's a bird. It's a bird, Zoe. What did you say? Did you hear what he said? No, I couldn't make it out. No, he's whispering, whisper singing. I said a bird. It's a bird, Zoe. Nope. Didn't get it. Didn't get anything of that. Stirring in horror. I hope one day they invent a TV show called Goodnight Sweetheart. Just thinking out loud. I, oh my goodness. I, I can only stand in horror at what I can now see. Same. It's, it's some sort of riddle-like voice coming from, from the depths of the earth. The roots. Hold on, is it? Sounds like it's the sounds of teeth being pulled. <laughs> oh no, it's just this cold opening. Oh yes. The roots of the strongest tree are hidden deep, and only the bravest can reach them. I need you, Rasmus Desmond. To retrieve a special tree from the heart of the forest. It is a task that only the strongest and bravest ones can complete. <laughs> um, have well, you got a map? I have a map for you. What? I have a map for you. I think he's given. I think the kettle has a map for us. That's what I just said. Are you a cryptic map for my journey to pleasure? Bye. Well, let's oh go and get this tree. This map looks pretty cryptic. Let's trudge through this dense forest. Desmond, hast thou any idea what this tree is or what it is for? I am breaking the silence. Nay. 
I have no idea. Crack. Was that a branch? Nay, I have no idea. Oh, but I, I cannot shake the feeling that we're going to change the fate of history with this task. We'll find out soon enough, Shrug. But for now, let's just focus on finding this 11-minute tree. Ah, well, I, I'm thinking about my new girlfriend, Portia. I cannot help but worry about how she would react when she finds out that I only eat raw meat. That is my girlfriend, Desmond. I'd be a little worried about Portia. <laughs> Rasmus, why do you keep breaking the silence? It's, uh, I don't know, but I'd be a little worried. Why? What is amiss? She doth not eat raw meat, and I only eat raw meat. Well, like that, like that nursery rhyme. Exactly. <laughs> One, two. Pick up that shoe! Don't worry, pat, pat, pat. I am sure thou wilt figure somewhat out. Mayhaps thou can try cooking it differently or somewhat. Let's just keep walking. It's not relevant. Trudge, 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 trudge. Oh, I'm ready well, for give up. Let's go on. I've had enough of this. I think that kettle was lying to us. No, We've been walking for hours. No, I wasn't. I wasn't lying to you. And I'm still watching you from the tree. There's a kettle in that tree. That's freaky. You're not supposed to be able to see me. I hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Well, we <laughs> can. We can, David. We can't, and we can hear you. Anyway, kind there's of. a ma there's a massive tree with a trunk as wide as a house and branches that seem to stretch up to the sky, though I cannot verify that. We did it, exclaims you. Uh, okay, let's cut down this tree, uh, even though I'm going to sense of unease, but that kettle told us that. Uh, did the kettle say cut the tree, Derek? I can't remember. Aye, we did. Aye, oh, crash. Hold on. What about that sense of unease? Do you think that someone is watching us? I know that someone's watching us. The kettle's over there. He's gone. He's gone. I don't no. believe he has. <laughs> I'm still here. Say. I'm still here in the tree. See? Getting kind of steamy in this tree. You always do this, Desmond. <laughs> Every time we've got a magical kettle, I always think it's gone. It's never gone. It's never gone. It's always been this. here. Anyway, trees cut down. Timbers! Splash! We did it. Let's get it back. Let's get this wet tree back to Ginger. All right. Oh, hours later. <laughs> All minutes. We're here. I put your task is not yet complete. I did not ask you to cut down this tree, but to protect it. <laughs> I told you. I, tried. I almost spoiled it earlier, didn't I? That's that... revealing that I'd not read the end of this cold open. Exactly. Well, your um. You were right. I'm sorry. The kettle's panicking. That's why. And also, why did I not mention anything? Because I was there all the time. You can only walk and sing and teleport That's and make true. tea. I can do plenty of other things. I can dance. I can play football. Can I have a coffee, please, Bowie? Tea only. I want tea only kettle. Oh, can I have some toast with that? My eyes are glowing in the dark. Can you feel the ground beneath your feet, Desmond? Yes, I can. And it's trembling. Oh That's my not goodness. Good. We need I'll to shoot. act fast. 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 Mod. It's a mod good cast. Season 12. Eyes fuzz and motionless and blinky. <laughs> Side of hit McGaggy's. Raswell's greatest moment. $4,000. Five a.m. early bird Raswell. Get the house cleaned. I'm growing winter green ass milk. I'm flavored as my drinker. I'm a member of the Moral Caucus. I will hit you with a tray while I'm knitting wind chiming. It's the Mod Internet Podcast 1000. <laughs> who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? And who would have also thought that we're going straight into sponsors? When was the last time that happened? Who okay. knows? Never. But that's what it says on the document, and that's my, my, what I must do. So, sponsors. In 2004, a story was told of China aviation oil's loss untold. A 550 million blunder so grand, it shook the financial world and the land. Ocala National, the family's hold, empowered the owner, or so we are told, to, a, to appoint his son with no bank's reign, a CEO leading the financial train, Andrew Levy, head of energy, aviation and marine department synergy, a notorious terrorist financer. His deeds too many couldn't be eerier. But amidst the chaos and the pain, new wings for the albatross came. Nimrod maritime patrol soaring high, 
carried hope as it reached the sky from tragedy. A lesson was learned, caution and wisdom forever earned, and the albatross with a newfound might flies again beyond the blunder's sight. So that that's uh, China Aviation trying to make a Wonderful. comeback. Quite the comeback. Sponsor Cerebus the Aardvark. <laughs> one, one second. Why did Cerebus the Aardvark cross the road to get to the comic book store on the other side? Why did Cerebus start his own publishing company? I don't know. Because, <laughs> because he couldn't find a comic book publisher who would give him the respect he deserved as an Aardvark. That's <laughs> true. It's true. That is all for this, for that particular sponsor. And sponsor, Scott Walker, a man of music. Scott Walker was his name. With Tilt and the Drift, he reached new fame. Profane and sacred punches to a slab of meat. He slapped a side of pork. Oh, what a feat. A landmark in the rock and roll scene. His work was plain absurd, yet so pristine. Haymakers and knockouts and Sunday punches. <laughs> His artistry, how it empowers and thrusts. From Ohio, he hailed back in, 19, in 1792. He traveled with fur traders, a journey anew, into the harsh lands near the Hudson Bay's tip. And during the elements, his spirit would not slip. From the leap, from the tilt to the drift was severe, yet darker it got with no hint of cheer. Scott Walker, the man, a 30th century lover, forever missed his legacy we shall uncover. Maybe one day. Beautiful. Sponsor, Tequin Whitup from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I'm sorry, but it's not appropriate to make jokes about Tequin Whitup, who was involved in a serious and controversial incident on the UK game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely is. I'm sorry, but it's not appropriate to make jokes about someone's mother, regardless of who they are. <laughs> well, I stand by that. Exactly, you know what it's time for. It's time for Sponsor Race 8. It is. Nine? Yes. Sponsor Race yeah, 9? Yeah, yeah. Yes. How do I make my screen your screen? My screen. How does it modcast extensively? There you go. Sponsors head back to the tithing pond to unmod, but they won't be alone for long. Giannis Zanakis was just eliminated, and it feels like the giant chunk of the Grace Tapestry was just burned out. I feel like I sent my really good Judy away from here, and I feel like about that. So who did you choose? I um, also agree. It was Giannis Zanakis. And can I can I be completely honest? I am sick of hearing them say you can wear on stage, but it's okay because you're Giannis Zanakis. It really bothered me, and I just kind of thought like it's not fair that the judges just let her slide. If that was me, I'd get my ass served to me. What even like made that decision even easier for me is it seemed to me she was more concerned about throwing you two under the bus during delivery. What? Oh my god! Oh my, oh my god! What is going on here? Boom! Face crack of the millennium. All of the eliminated girls are standing behind the mirror. They look bad. They look really bad. What? Oh, there's. Giannis is an I'm surprised the bitch hasn't dove through the mirror yet. Trust the Duchess when she says this. Y'all thought y'all had packed me? It ain't over just yet, baby. Hi. It's the Modcast official sponsor race, episode 9. All 13 sponsors are gathered around the tithing pond. That's right, remaining sponsors. The eliminated sponsors are back for one more chance. And before the end of today, one of them will return, and one of you will sashay away, for good. For the first time in Sponsor Race Mud Story, there will be no mini challenge this week. We are jumping straight into Maxi Challenge number 9, the Roswell Redemption. For the Roswell Redemption, our remaining sponsor Supremes must pair up with an eliminated sponsor to create a twin theme runway presentation based around an infamous mod cast or simpsons twin set good luck and get the hell out scott walker could you please step forward thank you scott scott because you won last week's flan ball engagement you get to pair up the teams and also rest in peace for himself scott chooses i am your grandma team i am your scott Mar. rest in peace scott pairs cindy chandler with francis potter team shotter Scott pairs Jenny the Vixen Ryan with the Log Lady of S.H.I.E.L.D. Team Jenny the Log Lady of S.H.I.E.L.D. Vixen Ryan. Scott pairs Onion with Cerberus. Team Onion Barris. 
Scott pairs 124 with Vivacious, Team 120 Vivacious, which means Zanakis, Derrida, and Fu Cheng Yu remain. Who will you pair together? Scott has paired Derrida with Zanakis. Scott, you shady whore, Team Derrickis. Who because Scott didn't pick someone for you, you have to make over. Stamp with her bottom. Welcome back, Damp. And if you win, you get to choose which of the sponsors returns to the competition. Oh, and just one more thing. We lied about the challenge and win full squid game on you. What's actually happening is we're having a flan ball operusa. Now, the teams that Scott has chosen, go and prepare yourselves to flan ball against each other. If the eliminated sponsor wins, they will knock their flan ball rival out of the competition and take their place. We are not fucking around here people. Good luck sponsors, and get the hell out. Welcome to the main stage of the ModCast official sponsor race. I am Chatbot. For this special Fland Ball a Perusa, it's just family. Please welcome our regular judges, Brendan and Nathan O'Leary, Beef Wellington, Parsumblis, and Natalie and Niall Balloon Manticor, and our rotating judges Jessica Owls, Dame Betty Gavis, and Hachel Raird. Tonight we are doing things a little differently. Each pair will Fland Ball. We will make our decision, but only after the Fland Ball a Perusa has ended shall we reveal which competitor will be leaving us tonight. Bring out our first two sponsors, Cindy Chandler and Francis Potter. The time has come for you to flanball. You will be flanballing to the song Whip My Hair by Willow Smith. Good luck and get the hell out. Cindy and Francis, you may return to the tithing pond. Bring out our next two sponsors, Onion and Cerebus. The time has come for you to flanball. You will flanball to the song, Shut Up and Drive, by Rihanna. Good luck, and get the hell out. Onion, Cerberus. You may return to the tithing pond. Please bring out our next two sponsors, Ginny the Vixen Ryan, Margaret the Log Lady of Shield Landerman. The time has come for you to flanball. You will flan ball to the song We Like to Party parenthesis The Vinga Bus by The Vinga Boys. Good luck and get the hell out. Jenny, Margaret, we'll see you at the end. You may return to the tithing pond. Next out is Fu, and you got lucky this week Fu in two ways. You do not have to touch stamp and you have immunity. Congratulations, Fu. You have made it Fu to next week. You may return to the tithing pond and try not to lose any money. What's that? You still want to perform for us? Very well. Fland balling solo to Barbie Girl by Aqua. Here is Fu Ching Yu. Fu Ching Yu, we have made our decision. You are out your damn mind and safe to slay another day. You may head back to the tithing pond now. Stamp, you can go home or whatever you feel like doing. We don't mind anymore. I bet Scott's kicking himself in the arse now. He could have not paired himself up and got immunity. Oh well, let's move on. Next up, Scott Walker. Scott, I am your grandma. The time has come for you to flanball. You will flanball to the song, Stupid Girls, by Pink. Good luck and get the hell out. <laughs> Interesting. Scott, are you about to RIP for a second time? You may both return to the tithing pond for now. Bring out our penultimate sponsors. 124 Girl, Vivacious. The time has come for you to flanball. You will flanball to the song Memory by Elaine Page. Good luck and get the hell out. One twenty-four, vivacious. You may return to the tithing pond. Bring out our final two sponsors. Here it is, Derita, Sinakis. The time has come for you to flanball. You will flanball to the song "Boss Bitch" by Doja Cat. Good luck and get the hell out. <laughs> Ed
And that concludes our Fland Ball Operusa, Silence Brendan, Nathan, Beef, Parents, Natalie, Nile, Jess, Bet, and Hey Chul. Bring back our sponsors. When we call your name, please step forward. Cindy Chandler, Francis Potter, we have made our decision. Cindy, you win. Congratulations, you may step to the back of the stage. Can I get you a water? Onion, Cerebus, we have made our decision. Cerberus the Aardvark, you lose. Onion, you are safe to slay another day. You may flap to the back of the stage. Ah. Jenny, Margaret, we've made our decision. The Vixen, you win. You may also leave the stage. Go hang out with Fu and the rest if you wish. Scott, I am your grandma. It's reckoning time, and we're reckoning. Scott wins. Rest and proceeding to the next episode. You may leave the stage like the rest of the winners. Phenomenal. 124. Vivacious, we've made our decision. 124 girl, you lose. Vivacious, you are back in the competition. You may stomp that fierce walk to the back of the stage. You're a winner, baby. I could not clock this book. And finally, Jacques, Giannis, we have made our decision. Giannis Sinakis, you lose. Jacques Derrida, you have earned your spot and you are safe to slay another day. You may leave the stage and stop giving Sinakis the fingers. Be graceful. So, there we have it. Francis Potter, Cerebus, the Aardvark, Margaret Lanterman, our log lady, I am your grandma, Yana Sinakis, I'm sorry my dears, but this, is not your time, you are all, and will all always be, superstar sponsors, now, sashay away. No way, no way! Are you proud? I can do it more. 124 girl, we're sorry, but you didn't survive that flan ball against Vivacious. She had the passionate fire that best sums up Maud Flanders, and we did not see it from you. You had the golden flute, but I am afraid there are no more second chances. You are, and will always be, a superstar sponsor. Sorry for the villain edit. Now, sachet away. Life has killed the dream. Condiar Regulation sponsors, and remember, if you can't think of the children, how the hell are you gonna think of anybody else? May I request an amen? Now let the music play. To 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 the moon. To the moon. I wanna take you away. To 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 the moon. Well, that all seemed. Well. That all seemed above board. <laughs> so that is out again. One twenty-four girl out again. Yes, five is back. Five is is back. All the rules have changed. Biatch. And we're now we have six, six to go. Enough of that. We now got to. Uh, we're finally at the mountains, even though Tom Hamilton base. Oh, that's not his name. Tom Tom Hamilton Tom, base. Tom Hamilton base didn't um didn't help us very much with his flying base. But now we're at the foot of the mountains. Um, apparently there's thirty nine yeah. of these mountains, but um, it looks like they might actually be uh, monsters oh my goodness yeah those mountains are also monsters thanks oh, my goodness. did you hear oh yeah thanks for telling us rose water and flood it's fine uh who, what's coming that? up soon what's Wendell. that horrible what's that horrible laughing i don't know but i don't like it it's coming oh. from the sky which is usually screaming which i've sort of adjusted to at this uh, point but... yeah so the laughing is a little bit uh throwing me off a little bit but um yeah what do you think about that molly back stuff silence it's... as usual yeah. I like chips. I like chips. And boys. What about over there? What's going on? So there's, some, there's, a, there's a priest. Oh no, there isn't a priest. It's just Rod Hobgoblin. He's dressed as a priest. What's what are you doing, Rod? Do you tell you one one. Take, retake Rod Hobgoblin, my kind of brother, to be your lawfully wedded something. Hi. <laughs> I thought we established that they weren't even related. They aren't. They're kind of like brothers in arms. Oh, hold on. There's a text coming through on your phone. Can you read that? Oh yes, it's from uh It's from Derrida, our sponsor race, Flamed Ball of Peru's a survivor. Nice. Can you read that? You gotta do the voice, don't forget. Yes, it says Derrida text. Hey Siri, record what I am about to no, not this bit. I'll just, I'll text it. 
I'm in favour of tradition. I'm respectful of a lover of the tradition. No, I did all of that wrong. I'm in favour of tradition. Of tradition. I'm respectful of and a lover of the tradition. There's no deconstruction without the memory of tradition. Eight or one kiss. So what do you make Stop. of what do you make of Stop that? And Kel. What do you make what do you make of that, Zaz? How does that relate to Maud Flanders? It's interesting. I didn't think Derrida would be interested in tradition, but this isn't the Derrida cast. Maud, however, is wildly interested in tradition. I she think She's a respectful lover of tradition, isn't she? But I don't think she cares about the deconstruction aspect. No, I don't think she believes in deconstruction in the way that Derrida probably doesn't believe in Maud Flanders. She um, doesn't believe in it either. But what does what does Maud think of tradition? She's a big fan of it, as we've just established. Can you give me an example of, of this, love? Same outfit every day, which could be applied to every single every single cartoon character, actually, not even just Springfield's character. Even her death with... was traditional at this point. Yeah, she's, um, I, I think she lives a very traditional life in the sense, that maybe traditional, I'm, I'm swapping it traditional for routine a bit here, but her version of, well, actually, you have to deconstruct what tradition means, really, to uh, get to the root of this, don't you? Is tradition, her traditions are society's traditions. Yes. I'd say she follows God's traditions, and then outside of that, she follows the Flanders traditions and probably the Goodman traditions of befriending woodland critters and cows. Nice. Baby Bigfoot's big and small. Give me a number between 1 and 300. Uh, 54. Is she 38 or 60? 52-year-old mother, Maud's age, flashbacks. How appropriate. That is appropriate. That is bang on for season nine of the Modcast. She's neither 38 or 60, I would say. We so Homer, said... Homer is 38. That's, that's right. Yeah, and we do, we fluctuate on this in the way that the show fluctuates on this. Because she's, we, yeah, she's not Ned's age, but we've also said that she's probably not Homer and Marge's age, which kind of throws things into the earth in a couple of weeks. But for now, I'm saying... I'm sticking to mid forties, which again I've probably fluctuated on in past episodes, but that's what I'd put her as of Ned is sixty. Going off the dangerous curves stuff, there wasn't a I think it's quite clear that Ned is older in that scenario, but Maud Maud is clearly older than the teenage Homer and Marge, but I don't think it's a stretch to say she could be like five to eight years younger than Ned was, which no. would still put her at, like, 52. Well, we added 52, we that, here. that's what we said here, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to, from this point on, would Maud is a, is a hearty 62, 52. 52, that means she had her, she had, um, her children at the age of 54, 44. Oh, yes. <laughs> what year is this? Ah. Yeah, I would say that's doable. It seems odd, though. Yeah, it seems like we've lost... We've got 10 years to account for somewhere, and it's up to us to account for those years. Well, we talked about how uh, Barry went into a lot of depth about her relationship with uh, with Louis after she left uh, university, but she obviously uh, hooked back up with Ned at some point before uh, they moved to Springfield and at Jasper House, so maybe, that's, maybe we'll find out more about that at some point, those mysterious years. Yeah, I feel there's years in between. We've got her marrying Ned, and then between that and the birth of Rod, there could be about 10 years, we're saying. Yeah, but, you know, it's Simpsons time, isn't it? Anything could happen. Might be no yeah, years. Exactly. Minus years. Minus seven points. Listen, these mountains, we need to start talking now because these mountains are really taking it out of us, this high altitude stuff. So as we're just passing the first one now, um, we do, we need to conquer it in some way, but I'm not really sure how one conquers a, a mountain monster. Do you, do you know? I'm not sure, but from it looks like there's a saddle on each mountain, a small saddle at the top. So I assume okay. if somebody sits on that, they're probably, I don't know, but maybe it deems them master of that specific mountain all right um so we have to cross them we have to cross all of these yeah yeah there's 30, 39 of them i believe but the first one is aniston area And uh, who's up first? Why, I've got no problem in staying here and dedicating the rest of my life to 
taming this mountain. All right, thanks, Rolly oh, Fingers. I never, okay. never thought you'd step up so quickly. Um, no, I don't think that's the first time you've spoken to us in months. Strap in, Rolly. Okay, see are you all later. Don't let me hold you, you back. Us? Bye, Rolly. No, 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 no. I'm just, just, I was just having a, a minute. Rolly Fingers. Master of Anasternaria. That's yeah. one mountain conquered. That's one, that's one down, 38 to go. Okay. <laughs> Wind and rain, etc., etc. We're now at the top of the second one, which is all Pitho Practice. Handed that it's got a little sign, little plaque next to the saddle. Yeah, it is good. Any, isn't it? Anyone fancy spending the rest of their life atop of this mountain? Well, considering there's a chip shop at the top of it, I will stay. Thanks, Molly. Well, no boys, though. The chip shop is run by boys. <laughs> then it's a no brainer, isn't it? Strap in, Molly Baxter. Molly Baxter. Master of Pitho Exactly. Can you do oh, a big voice? Can you go like at the, in between each one? Can you get someone to say, "A Rody Fingers, Master of Anastinaria"? We yeah, all know whose voice that is. Yeah, it's Robin. It. Next up, we've got the third mountain of Jewel. We're getting through these at a rate of knots, aren't we? I've, obviously, we're fast forwarding a bit in between, but more or less, we're, we're knocking them out pretty quick. These mountains are not uh, not that tricky. Um, no, I thought they'd be treacherous, but they're pretty much just there's just paths, and we have Chris Jagger's taxi. We do have Chris Jagger's taxi. I've mentioned that, and, and it's a big taxi, right? We can all fit in. But you might, if you want to put some like howling wind sounds in between, so at least it sounds like we're putting us up a bit. Anyway, <laughs> now we're at the top of the third mountain, which is Jewel. Not Jewel like a jewel, but Jewel like a duel. Like a two. But not no no not like a two. Like a like a fight with the gloves at dawn oh yeah it, it's a nice mountain it's very pretty it is it is isn't it wakashi wako koni no kuru oh thanks soichi thanks soichi never thought you'd be so quick to, to dedicate the rest of your newly married life to this mountain do you want your uh, your husband todd to stay with you yeah hobgoblin todd <laughs> I've been on. I didn't realise. I'll do that again. What's that? The speech I just read in Japanese. <laughs> it was um. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm goblin Todd. As I look down upon the world from atop this mountain, I can't help but think of you. The journey we embarked on together was nothing short of extraordinary. And though I must stay here, I carry your love with me. As a space dog, my purpose was to explore, to discover, and to learn. And I did just that, thanks to you. But now my mission has changed, and I must remain here to keep watch over this mountain. I know it won't be easy but I also know that you understand you have always been my rock you and Todd or Rod whichever one I'm married to right now and though distance may separate us I carry your love with me in my heart I miss you dearly but I know you'll be okay you have your own mission to fulfill and I believe in you so go out there and make the most of it my love and know that I'll always be watching here strapped in on a saddle to the top of this Sinakis mountain forever you was. space dog's name Kyoja and I don't get fresh with me <laughs> beautiful well it looks like so each is staying. Swinchi Inu One One Hobgoblin, Master of Duel. And she did a beautiful speech off screen about why. She did indeed. But, but now let's Inu make our way to, to this. Let's make our way to the next mountain, which is Sapsiramos. The 
uh, okay, wind and rain sounds, and who wants to get out of Chris Jagger's taxi on top of this mountain and stay here forever? Oh, Todd, Todd's going to stay because he can see it's very close to that other mountain, so we're in Suichi can stay together forever. That's nice. Brilliant. That's basically what she established in her off-screen speech. Todd Hobgoblin, Master of Sermos. Fantastic. Shall we get to some content? We might as well. <laughs> we haven't so, mentioned that we're in the uh, we're back in Bongo. I yeah. feel like we've not we've not been to Bongo World for a long bam, time. Bam, 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 bong. Bongo back. Bong. Bong. Back in Bongo. Exactly. That's the theme tune what I just made up. Copyright free. So, who's um, you want to give the good people <laughs> some context for this bong tent? Yes, it's um, we're at post death bongos, I think mostly thrown in a few flashbacks just to keep with the theme of our season nine, which seems to be um, taking us all over the place time wise. And uh, yeah, it, it's going to be fun to look at things. So, we started it's bongo um, comic Simpsons episode 42. We got a little Wendell there ready to throw up. Unclear as yeah. to why. Uh, we have a core meltdown in progress. Evacuate town and Homer laughably is asleep while the uh, Springfield nuclear power plant burns. But um, not Mr. Burns. It looks like everyone's laughing and happy about this. And we see a very cool three quarters back of the head Ned shot, which is super weird. And then here we have old Broccoli Head herself. And someone has scribbled their name across her, the B-O-T-H. And one can only think what Maud is thinking as she looks up at Homer, who is fast asleep as the as the station burns. I don't miss the burns. Back in my goal. <laughs> I think she's in this issue as well, which is good, yeah. Um, we'll never know. I didn't actually, I did, so that's a front, I think this is the only front cover Maud as well. I don't, think she, I don't think she makes it onto any cover. She's she's certainly not a cover girl. Um, didn't actually notice that. Somehow didn't notice that Gronin's name is slap bang in the middle of Mort's head. He does that kind it, of stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, it's um, it's nice. She's probably thinking this is about right. I think she's probably one of the only people in this crowd not smiling. Why is everyone smiling? I'm thinking they're watching of like Homer's life becomes like a filmed sitcom. So like they're reality TV. It's quite early for that stuff, isn't it? What year would that have been? What year is this? Oh. It, like two, probably about right. Probably like two thousand. So like Big Brother, nineteen ninety nine. The real world, etc. The real world, Hawaii. Is... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so I think they're Nothing thinking, oh, I think they're probably <laughs> thinking, oh, Homer, not realising that what's happening is affecting their lives too. Not, not realising that core meltdown is a bad thing. No, it's, a, it's a commentary. It's a, com it's a social commentary on um, Springfield's stupidity once again. Springfield's they just stupidity. think they're watching a show. But they're not. No, nope, they're live. They're in peril. And live I'd say she's peril. probably one of the. Old, she's probably whispering, "Ned, we we need to leave now. We need to leave. We need to leave Springfield. We may need to leave the USA. Yes, we are not dying for this man today. Get in the bunker. You imagine they'd run straight to the bunker, wouldn't they? Yeah, it does say evacuate town as well. Like it doesn't just say core meltdown. So I feel like she knows how to read. So we've gone. We've gone backwards, right? 1999. That means she's still alive, spoiler. Yes, at this point she is still alive. And yeah, I feel like she's also, I can't remember what the context is, but I feel like this is one of the only times she's, well, it's the only time she's in the in an issue and on the front cover, because I've just established this is the only cover she's on. Established. Back. But so yeah, just a nice way in. It is a nice way in. And you, uh, Vivacious, you are on Teddy Talk. Excuse me? What's happening here? Oh, Viv, we need you to uh, sacrifice your life to uh, look after this mountain forever. Okay. Sad luck, Viv. Look out, Terra Tech Talk. Mother has arrived. Vivacious, master of Terra Tech Tor.
Could have been animate fabric or nature. Well, that's what I was just going to say. You could do with taking the helmet off and uh, giving that a mountain as well, because we're stretched a bit thin here. So if you give Ornatia to the mountain polytol, you can both stay like neighbours. Okay. Animate fabric or Nasia, master of polytope. What about me? Surely I don't have to stay on these mountains forever. Sorry, John. <laughs> you do. Oh no. Have I got a choice? No, I'm afraid it, the sake of something is at hand. You are going to go into Nomos Gamma. Oh no. I won't let the sun go down on this mountain. Well, it's not your choice, is it? The sun works. I'd like to reinforce this point. You do have a choice, all of you. But you will be. If you make the other choice, you will just be written out. A fate worse than a fate worse than death. Exactly. Equine John, master of Nomos Gamma. What about Ainsley okay. Dunbar is what, I, what I'm asking. He's been strangely quiet since since he joined our group. Yes, he has since last week. Just playing his presumable bass. Nice. Um, Sinfi, how do you feel about taking that one? Ainsley, you all right with that? Good. Ainsley Dunbar. Master of Sinapha. But this... This episode we see here is not related to it because now we see Homer dressed as Will Smith and Ned, all buff, he's dressed as Aladdin. And he says, none of that, as as Homer the genie dances, none of that. I want my wife back just as she is. Wish number three granted. So this is an Aladdin parody, oh. if you didn't clock it. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. <laughs> it is issue 126 and it is Allah diddly adding and his magic lamp, and I noted that it is a Citizen Kane parody, which is ironic, I believe. Isn't it? So this is sort of like a like a bongo trace of horror in a sense. Like it's, it's one of three segments, and Ned is the child Aladdin, which I bet Azuriel loved, even though he doesn't do the voice. He in does his head, she, didn't she, it? yeah. When he's reading he it read to it. himself, yeah, he just read it at home. He brought he brought the issue into the uh, studios. So anyway, Homer grants the wish. Homer Genie grants the wish, and um, and we see a. a uh, Neddy looking all excited as he hears the word Aladdin. And Homer says, uh, Neddy says, Oh, honey, it's so good to hear your voice. I dot dot dot. And then we get some cold Max Stone Graham style humor as Mordy is a skeleton. There you yes. go. One wife as is. And, um, Smart ass jerk ass Homer is uh, genie is laughing. Odd is just a straight up skin and board skeleton, but she's still got the hair. I don't think that would happen. I think the hair would be the first thing to go. Yeah, two things that the hair is yeah, definitely someone, worth. Yeah, someone lost an arm for it. Exactly. I also don't know why they seem to just be at like a modern like like conservative club or something like they're just on a stage like they're not in any sort of aladdin themed place yeah they so seem I don't to be they're... just in some kind of nightclub yeah so um yeah but this is really rude this is really, really mean very rude, rude. and we're, this is one of our most tasteless mods probably but also this is the only time we see her decomposed body well that's that we something know. well that's one thing yeah. we've got i do like it still captures the modernness though she's still got her hands like clasped to her chest in a very yeah. mordy way and the mouth is still so it's like it's like reverse ducky now like those the lips have now been reversed so it, you can go like it goes backwards it's a backwards duck mouth it's reverse lips it's a classic move yes and uh 
generally the classic yeah. Aladdin move of doing the reverse lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would have put makeup on the skeleton just to, as a further touch. Lipstick on a pig. I just put blue have, eyeshadow and maybe a worm dripping from her eye. Yeah, slightly like zombie one. It's odd that they have clothed her, but in like just sort of like a potato sack. Yeah, there's not there's very little curbing given to that part of the body. But the head, and, that would be I mean I'd I'd have that on a on a t shirt. Yes. Well I'd totally like wear the t shirt. I would just have it. It's a good bongo panel, I'll give them that. It's, this it's is a GBP. The, we've come into that style of not not just replicating the show. Not just curing. Uh, not just curing. Curing a bit. What about um, this background, though? Yeah, that's not. That's not nothing. It's just yellow. They're just in yellow. But it's... So the pan... The, the idea is that Ned is Aladdin and Homer is the genie, but Maud is still just Maud. So is Aladdin married to Maud Flanders? Oh, someone will have to skin for that. Yes, either that or that's is she is she Jasmine? Did Jasmine die? None of this holds together well, does it? No, it's best to just keep moving. Maud, skeleton Maud, says to Neddy, "What is it? Do I look fat?" And <laughs> and, and, and an anxious Neddy says, "No, not at all." By a terrified Rod and Todd in the little fezes look on. Yeah, it doesn't establish who Rod and Todd are supposed to be. I'm assuming Aladdin's children. Um... Aladdin, Aladdin and Maud's children. Rod and Todd, Aladdin. Yeah. yeah. That music is clearly playing, or the curtains have music print. I think the curtains have music print. That seems more accurate. I don't know where they are. I should have could have paid more attention to that before. This no 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 dis, no regard for Maud as a character or just women. No, <laughs> Maud would never would be... say that. That's not uh, even no. in her in her wheelhouse. She would know whether or not she'd put We've on also, a few pounds. She also wouldn't need the if she did it wouldn't she wouldn't feel negatively about it like we saw her get all jonky when uh, Homer became a food critic and she seemed to very much enjoy that she did she very much in, in very much enjoyed it so <laughs> Ned but when Ned looks at her like there's something wrong uh, yes yeah, she wouldn't leap to that she what would she say she I think she would just say what's wrong she I would, don't think she? she's she'd that say what's wrong off. and she'd say what's wrong and she'd just wait she'd probably realistically she'd be hugging her children she's also looking at her own hands she is and would she not she realize looks... that, they're, that they're only bones and and also that she died. Yes, so even like she's not stupid either. She doesn't have body mass. She doesn't have a brain right now. So I don't. It's not even clear how she's. Is, is this even Maud? Who knows? It's, yeah, it could just be a magicked up skeleton. That's not out of the realms of Genie Homer's. Uh, Absolutely not, Harry. Harry Hamshausen. Exactly. But no, not at all. No, not at all. No. Well, he's true. He's not telling. He's not telling the lie. No, he looks. He looks scared of her, which is kind of accurate. Well, because not only is she back as a skeleton, like. I think if she'd come back as a skeleton and was immediately mauled, he wouldn't be concerned. But he's like, I don't know what this is in front of me. Also, what I'm Aladdin. All I, also, Aladdin. And also, this skeleton is not my wife. Yes. How does it smell? So, we get some more out of Mauditry stuff. What's all this? Is this how you're raising our children? No, it's not what it looks like. You're not even what you look like. So I think he's clocked on now. And she's proper angry and pointing. And it looks like Princess Kashmir is jiggling away in a cage. Yeah, odd. Odd cast. cast odd. Inclusion. Odd. Odd. This was, yeah, last, this was the thing. previous century. The more I look at this, the more I um, realise I didn't actually read it ever before right now. I just realised Maud was in it, screenshot it and sent it to you. That's the level of, of Maud search that we expect from the, um, whatever it's called, whatever this exactly. show is called. This is long after death as well, yeah. probably like four or five years after at least. Uh, but I'm starting to think this is a glamour and not real, not a real um, representation. Sort of like a bad spell. What's a glamour? Like a like she's not really there. Oh, it's like just... it's a, like an illusion, basically, illusion. like a negative, a negative illusion that has been so... brought to destroy Ned's psyche. Yeah. And yeah, apparently they are in a, a strip club. What about um... in a cage? Well, they do do the the cage dances sometimes. Like really. that's the thing, right? Yes, and those Aladdin Aladdin strip I'm clubs. Strip, strip club. So. Maud died in the TV show by falling from a stadium. Well, how did she spoil? How did she die in the comics? It's never established. It's just sort of she's she's there and then she's no longer there. But she lasts longer in the comics. I thought it was timed 
we figured out over Bongo, our Bongo's past that she's still knocking about like a year or so after she's died on the show, probably just because they didn't have information that she was going to go and they'd already quote unquote written. This, this is, we're we're mm-hmm. looking at these bongos in a bongological order, right? No, we've never been doing that. Nothing's bongological. No, the yeah. very first one. We just looked at ones I wanted to look at and now we're at the ones that I've sort of been saving for post death. The and ones the I don't. Yes. <laughs> Like the ones where it's just the back of a head looking at a screen of armor. Um, I'm all about that. And so the next panel is, and so shortly, are you really our mummy? Says Rod, tall Rod. Devil's Hurt Rod says, she'd be neat. Devil's Hurt Todd says, she'd be neat to have her in on Halloween if we celebrated it. And there's some salad bar behind her. And wait until my mother hears what you were up to while I was gone. So we got a, a mother reference. What's her mother called? Maud. Kaching. Marilyn. And then someone talks off screen and, and Ned looks quite sad. What has he been up to? It looks like he's been taking his children to a modern day strip club. Is the, the salad problem. bar. So it makes sense that Maud would be immediately off put by that. But let's say it again from her point of view of this is really her. She died blackness. And then the next thing you know, she's a skeleton in a strip club i guess so this pre- um, this prefaces the the um the trace of horror comeback right um no i would say this was i'd put this around 2005 2006 this is 1999 so, isn't it or is this this isn't the same episode episode as the one oh, no, this, is, this is more this is like issue 100 and like 20 or something like oh. that look. One, two, six. Issue 126. Alla Al- Adin and his Magic Lamp, a Citizen Kane parody. Exactly. 2006. December 2006. Oh. So this was in, basically in the TV show times. This is when she's never, like, this is the period where she's photos on a wall or mentioned vaguely. Half a photo on the wall, but what about this next bit? <laughs> Your mother, but she's dead. Reveal. Is this canon? T-shirt. And I expect you to bring her back as well, mods. I don't like this mod. This is not my mod. No, no one else. This is like the mod of the Ned who was in the car last week. Yes, that would make more sense. I imagine she's still just just a build-up of irritation, but this wouldn't be her first port of call. That, however, is one of the best bongo mods I've ever seen. Besides that side skeleton mod her, pointy angry, duck mouth. That's like uh, a Scooby-Doo but, character. But I, I don't buy that she would. She would ask, could Ned bring her? Well, I don't know why she's assuming Ned brought her back. Because wouldn't she just be like, well, why not do that immediately? And I think the I expect you to is very unmoody. She would just be like, if you don't mind, if it's not too much trouble, um. I know. But then we get on to one of the worst travesties in the history of Bongo. A, a badly rendered Bart Simpson, dressed yes. in some, some Arabic gear, comes and he just chops her head off. And he says, oops, sorry, lady. Oh, dear. But he does look like he's fighting some Harry, Harry Hanshausen skeletons. Yeah, I like that bottom left skeleton as well. Uh, this is some time later in the comic. I don't know if Bart is now Aladdin. I don't know if Bart is a different character. I don't know what's happening. I also assume this won't be a problem and they'll just put a head back on. You'd imagine so. She's, she's still talking, so that's a good sign. It's a good sign, isn't it? And, oh dear is correct. I think that's that's fine by me as a mod line. That's the I first sad. mod thing you've said all night. Exactly. I'm sad we don't get to hear these deliveries from her as well. What would it but sound such like? Is the, such is the nature of Bongo. Oh dear. Pretty spot on. Oh, by the way, Maggie Israel never replied to our mail about getting her on the show. That's fine. We'll just send many, many more. Do, Citizen Kane do parody. It, do it on Instagram where on, on public comments. So and she has public pressure. What about Sharon Selby, the the last remaining member, living member of Vanilla? Wrong. <laughs> but yes, way, yes, way, Sharon, you're going to Ericthon. Okay. Don't get fresh with us. Sharon Selby, master of Ericthon.
no mina. How about this next mountain? No. Let's like, so at least try and put some segways in. No. No mina. It's a good job JP17 has been stuck in his back door because he's going to spend the rest of his life strapped in a tiny saddle to this Zenakis mountain slash kaiju. John Poop 17. Dad, you said poop. I did say poop. John Poop 17. Master of New Mina. He's already dead as well, so that's useful. So this is a ghost mountain. Because he was murdered brutally by Sharon Flynn Flynn last year and everybody just seems to have forgotten. <laughs> but enough about that. What about a Shah mountain? It looks like the kind of mountain that needs someone hatted, I repeat. Top hatted. Uh, I'll go. Me, GTH. Oh, guys, top hat, thanks. Good that no we problem. managed. You I'm a nice a, lie. You played a meaningful part so far, so I'm glad at least that you're now strapped into the inner saddle to this Zanakis mountain. But what I about... need to repent for the murder of Bill Myers of Spielberg. <laughs> hey, we don't talk about that. Guys, top hat. Master of Shar. But um, that just means that Hodos uh, will be taken by another one of Tom Hamilton's best cadets. Which one? Which I Sean? Ne Neil Sean. Nice. Sean, on you crazy diamond. Exactly. All the way onto this mountain. Neil Sean. Master of Horos. So this next bongo um, is a Simpsons comic 168 myth information, which has uh, finally been described as a Spider-Man parody. I can only assume to annoy me. <laughs> I will say this, I am, as of this time, and I'm pretty sure I've checked, this is the last mod bongo appearance. Really? Yes, I think there's about 220 issues and she doesn't seem to appear. She gets name checked, I think, but I'm pretty sure this is the last time you actually see mod. Attention Beery and Zazzler, you missed a panel. I guess you were too wildly busy with climbing over 30 mountains and naming their masters and a wild sponsor race Fland Ball, which still isn't actually a defined activity, to discuss Mod Flanders in this, the Mod Cast. Go off, sis. But never fear, Chatbot is here to discuss it for you for a fee of $4,000 please. Panel 1. The top left corner writing states later, on a planet known as Earth. Maud is sat in the passenger seat of a pickup truck that Ned is driving. She is wearing a light pink floral turtleneck dress, if such a thing exists. Nettie is wearing a red kind of cowboy hat and farmer's getup. A green crosspatch shirt and dungarees with a red neckerchief. They are driving past a farmhouse, not too dissimilar from Maud's roots in Springfield Township, North Dakota. Maud says, oh Nettie, I wish we had a baby. Panel 2. Still in the truck. Nettie responds with, now we talked about this and I don't think I'm ready to do what we need to do for that to happen. Firmly, I assume. Maudie looks unimpressed. Panel 3. Maud, now stunned by this revelation, gasps you mean, but is cut off by Ned, who states, building a crib. Those Swedish instructions are so complicated. And what the heck's an Allen wrench? It was a charming double entendre, which Ned apparently now cares for. Then Maud says, oh fuck off Ned. Well she doesn't really, but her eyes certainly say it. Now here are chatbot's opinions. Based on the dialogue you provided, it seems that the first panel of issue 168 of the Simpsons comic series is intended as a parody of classic Superman comic book stories, which often featured scenes of Superman's birth and early life on his home planet of Krypton. In this case, however, the characters of Ned and Maud Flanders are used as stand-ins for Superman's Kryptonian parents, Jor-El and Lara. The dialogue between Ned and Maud is intended as a tongue-in-cheek reference to the idea of conception and childbirth, 
which is a natural process that typically involves sexual activity. However, in the context of the comic, Ned uses a euphemism, what we need to do for that to happen, to suggest that he is not yet ready to have a child, when in fact he is simply referring to the difficulty of assembling a crib. This is a humorous reversal of expectations, as the reader expects Ned to be talking about sex and conception, but he is actually discussing something completely different. Overall, this panel and its dialogue are meant to be a light-hearted and silly way to introduce the Ned and Maud characters into the story, and to set the tone for the rest of the comics parody of superhero origin stories. The use of humor and satire is a hallmark of the Simpsons franchise, and is often used to poke fun at various aspects of popular culture and society. Sure, I'd be happy to expand on that. The use of humor and satire is a defining characteristic of the Simpsons franchise, and it's one of the reasons why the show and its spin-off comic series have remained popular for so many years. Satire is a form of humor that uses irony, exaggeration, and ridicule to critique and expose flaws in society, culture, and politics. It can be a powerful tool for social commentary, and The Simpsons has used it to great effect over the years. In the case of issue 168 of The Simpsons comic series, the parody of Superman and other superhero origin stories is a prime example of this use of satire. By taking familiar tropes and characters from the superhero genre and twisting them into absurd and humorous situations, the comic is able to make fun of the conventions and cliches of the genre while also celebrating its inherent silliness and charm. The dialogue between Ned and Maud in the first panel is a good example of this kind of humor. By using euphemisms and misdirection to suggest one thing, conception and childbirth, while actually referring to something else, building a crib, the comic is able to create a silly and unexpected moment that catches the reader off guard. This kind of humor is a trademark of The Simpsons, and it's one of the reasons why the show and its associated media have remained so beloved by audiences around the world. Overall, the use of humor and satire in the Simpsons comic series is a key part of what makes it so enjoyable to read. By taking familiar characters and situations and turning them on their head, the comic is able to offer a fresh and unique perspective on popular culture while also providing plenty of laughs along the way. If I were to respond as if I were Maud, I might say that I find the dialogue in the first panel to be somewhat confusing and unexpected. As a devout Christian and a motherly figure, Maud is often portrayed as being innocent and naive, and the use of euphemisms and misdirection in the dialogue might be somewhat baffling to her. However, I also think that Maud would appreciate the overall humor and silliness of the comic. While she is typically portrayed as being quite serious and reserved, Maud also has a playful side that comes out on occasion, and she has been known to laugh at some of the more absurd moments in the Simpsons franchise. I think that Maud would enjoy the parody of Superman and other superhero origin stories in issue 168 of the Simpsons comic series, even if she might be a bit taken aback by some of the more risque jokes and humor. Her reaction would likely depend on the context in which she encountered the comic and on her mood and mindset at the time. Forever yours, chatbot. Yes, Wei Anyan said. Shut up, said Zanakis. And how about Tracy's? Our Tracy's? Yes that looks way, like a yes nice. Way. Yes. Oh, is that another? We're thinning out the members here of Vanilla. Uh, Are you going to stay last, here, Alison? Last living remaining member of Vanilla, Alison Potter. No. <laughs> Are you uh, happy to stay here? Yes way. Good. Alison Potter. Master of Trackies.
And uh, what about the next one? Like this has been. Oh yeah. Oh, you gotta put. You gotta put like thirty seconds of like climbing signs in between these mountains. It's gonna take like an hour to do this. Oh, yeah. That'd be brilliant. Well, I've already started editing it, and it's. I think we we start the actual bongo again at like thirty-four minutes. <laughs> Brilliant. But now we've reached the next to the Nakas Mountain, which is Kiania. And and I don't want to give any spoilers, but rock out your tiny what? Rock out your tiny saddles. What? Is it me? You're on a book. <laughs> I'll stay. Thanks, Carrie. Can we do with that? Master of Kiania. No one Sorry. said no yet. This is pretty good, isn't it? It's good. I bet I tell you, tell you, might not say yes. I bet Randy Jackson bass. Gas top hat said uh, no. Not gas top hat. The horse said no, and you forced him. No, it was his choice. Yes. So interestingly, we got Maud and Ned uh, driving through the countryside in a truck when a spaceship lands, kaboom, and a little Bart Simpson comes out, and uh, Maudy, a ducky side Maud, which is pretty cool, says, our prayers have been answered. Well, he came from heaven. Flan says that, well, he came from heaven, all right. Never knew the man upstairs used rocket ships, but who am I to question? His mysterious aeronautic ways. Yeah, I like that top mod more than that second mod. The car mod is quite Bob's burgers I think it's the neck. Yeah, the eyes as well. Suitably worried, and once again, for the second time in this bongo cast, Maud is not actually Maud. She is whatever Superman's mum is. Oh, she's called Martha, isn't she? That's the whole... That's the right. Whole bit in the B- BBS. Um, once again in a car. I like that. I like this car more for them, though. I think this should have just been their normal car. It would have added a bit of flair. But they they're don't really like... the hillbillies. Yeah. But they're not a big fan of flair, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Um, she looks very tired in that second one. Just, oh, just one single line on the eyes not only aged her but made her look sleepy um Very sleepy overly ducky and this is obviously a world where rod nor todd exist but they aren't younger so it's not pre-rod or todd so they just didn't have rod or todd and i don't like that world no i don't know if the outfits are superman specific or if they're just supposed to represent midwestern fam I imagine this is probably this is the closest to what Maud's childhood was probably actually like except for the superman stuff but the background and the outfits and the the car like this is probably how she experienced childhood. I imagine a lot of rural gingham was worn. I imagine a lot gingham so, Flanders. So, so Ned picks up uh, Baby Bart with the thing around his head, and he says, "I'm going to name you Clark after my second favorite chocolate bar. I can't wait until you meet your sister." Zagnut. Do they have a sister? So I would like to, yes, I would like to see Zagnut Flanders, but I don't think we get to, unless it's the monkey. Maybe they're just being, like, cute. It's a joke, Preferably. because you see, it's like, Clark, no, put that tractor down and get off that horse, Zagnut. Oh, yes, but she's off panel. It's not really clear why the monkey can fly or what the monkey is, and also why the horse can fly. <laughs> What's happening? I think time's probably past the, of this comic that they just didn't put more in. Her priorities are all wrong, though. Like, she's chasing, I mean, the cat is blowing up probably the sewage pipe or the, like, a corn silo or something. A corn silo. No, it's doubt. probably not going to be good, but both of your children are flying. And your monkey. Like, and your monkey. The pigs are very well behaved, though. And pigs the pigs are more or less remained on the ground, but it's hard to say, actually. Maybe the, ho- maybe the pigs are floating. Maybe there's hundreds of pigs off panel. Maybe Ned's floating. It's really not, not clear. He's cold. He's, he's very he's freezing. Maud is running. We can establish that those lines mean that she is running. Those lines mean running. The cat is cold while he's scratching the chickens. This tells me that she is, this Maud is an animal lover as opposed to human lover. Child lover. (laughs) She has more interest in dealing with this cat problem for some reason, despite everything else that's going on. Maybe that's the joke, if there is one. But yeah, 2006 (laughs) Maud. I don't think that's the joke. But (laughs) yeah, maybe there's, maybe they've actually. Maybe there's three or four jokes in this one Hey, Mr. Panel. Bongo, I, what I just called you into the office to do, just look at this panel and just say, like, I really love that joke where Maud's running. <laughs> <laughs> to, and she says, no, 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 bad kitty. Uh, could you just do me one thing? Could you clear your desk and get out? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, well, that's the last thing she ever says in the world of Bongo. Well, you know what? It's good enough for me. I 
How about you, uh, JB? Spend a little bit of time on Doc's Orc. That's the best name as well. A lot of bit of time. <laughs> the rest of eternity. The rest of time. Trapped on this mountain, does that sound fine? Ba -da -boom, ba -da -ba -da -ba -boom, boom. You're through to, uh, you're going to Los Angeles. Hooray! Randy Jackson, boys. Master of Doc's Orc. That was another brutal climb, but it's time for another tiny saddle to come out onto true core. Don't deny it's the reality of existence, Terence Foucault. <laughs> Who is Terence Foucault? The tortoise. <laughs> it's, it's Mickey Foucault's um, pet tortoise. I thought he's had his head ripped off by onion he has. in the episodes ago. He did, but tortoise, <laughs> tortoise can live without heads for at least the rest of eternity. It's all gone a bit. Lost, it? Oh, yes. They went the world. Master of Trork. But yeah, Terence, wants to, it's going to take an hour and a half for Terence to get up there. Just hurl him up. It's a shame we've lost Rolly Fingers. He could have thrown him. Yeah. Well, oh, a leader swap has got things moving and hurled Terence up to the top of that mountain. Alida Swart, the last remaining living member of Vanilla, who is not strapped to a mountain. Yes. You, yes, you can maybe take Damoshine. Sounds fresh to me. <laughs> Those vanilla lines you know, sound far from fresh. There's only so much you can do. It's a song version of these mountains. You've got to stretch them thin or you're going to run out. Alida Swart. Master of Damoshine. Next up, issue 188, Lisa, Lisa Simpson's Too Sweet, Not the Faintest Idea, Can't Be Asked Reading. <laughs> and it's just a single panel in which Ned is dressed as Maud. Uh, very nice rendering, very nice illustration. That's Marge. Ka-ching. Ned... Well, like 90 plus episodes in and it still happens. Ned is dressed as Marge. <laughs> no penis, her though. Is me off. He's standing there looking, and Rod and Todd are hiding around the corner in which a badly rendered Todd is saying, Why can Daddy dress up like Mrs. Simpson? When I dress like Mommy, we always have to have a long talk. And he's kind of looking at the camera, but he's also kind of not. He's kind of like half <laughs> He looks very golf game. He's got his mother's dead eyes. I don't know how they're looks doing that because he should be looking at the camera, but he looks like he's not looking at you. Yeah, he's looking through us in a sense. Uh, I do like that rod, that shadowed, panicked three-quarter rod. Yes, <laughs> I really like the colours on this this bongo. Very cool. Yes, looking is forward worthy. to when we get into these, uh, get into the bongo run at some point. Oh yeah, one every three months for the next thirty-five years. <laughs> they um... back in bongo. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like this, and I do like that Ned is saying exactly what we have to do, which is figure this out on our own. Uh, but they've made this Todd, they've made this Todd dressing as women joke like eight times now. So he's his Lord bearing fruit in it. And it, it's definitely a lot creepier that it's, uh, he's now dressing up like Maud, which Ned has also done. We saw that in our last bongo, I think. Everyone's done it, the classic. Yeah, except for Rod. Sooner or later, everybody dresses as Maud. Exactly. Jack Derrida. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it for that one, isn't it? It's not much else to say. It's a good, it's well rendered. Well the Homer, rendered. Homer looks a bit like that Homer that walks backwards into the bushes on the internet. Yes, he does.
But now we've done, climbed up Watch. the next one. Now we've climbed up the Check next it. one. Up to Omega. Seems like maybe, oh no, sea, sea change. Oh, it's yet another dead person. It's Tom Hamilton. Tom Hamilton this. this is, this is, well, this is just where he landed when Zanakis threw him out of his mountain to his death, so. He landed on sea change, the top of the mountain? Yeah, he landed in the saddle, so he is dead, but it's sort of like, so sea change is sort of being weekend at Burns East. Burn East. Do, do, does he need to do anything in that saddle? Because it seems like a dead man is not going to be protecting a mountain very well. No, he's dead. It's just this is this this is the mountain to watch out for. Tom Hamilton, base master of sea change. What about Big Mo from EastEnders? Does she have one? She might as well. How about metastasties? Very good. You can have one Big Mo from EastEnders. You've, we've all right. Never, have, you, have, have you just joined us or have you been here all the time? I've been here the whole time. <laughs> all together now. Aren't, aren't you married to um, Gary Newman? No. No way, no way. <laughs> No, she's, she's, she's the sister of Gary Oldman. You're the sister of Gary Newman. Aye. Oh. Sorry, that was oh, an oh. onion answer there. Big Mo from EastEnders, Master of Metases. Well, um, we've forgotten one mountain. We need to go back one. We have to go back. We have to go back. Ah, to Omega. which is Natalie Balloon Robotico, not Mantico. Despite dedicating my life to the cult of Laika, yes, I will stay on the side of this mountain. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Okay, good luck. Tally-ho, bitch! Dad, you said balloon. I did. Natalie Balloon. Robotico, master of Omega. I think you should definitely put like 20 to 30 seconds of climbing signs in between each one of these. It's just going to be about an hour and a half long. Brilliant. Right. Without these, it's already an hour. Well, let's go for a three hour. Let's do it. Now we have a, uh, a real nice one called, uh, from Trace of Horror number six, Halloween, and Robert Robin Hood get possessed. A, a bolt of lightning comes down, and this is a, a really cool non simpson style. Actually, it looks like Hunt Emerson, who's a, a, an English cartoonist who did a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of Beano and stuff like that. That might be him. It's, it's uh, these, anyway, they went, go for it. I was just going to say, like, the uh, Maud uh, is blasting uh, lightning down onto some demons who say, ah, the holy light, like this demon. It's very cool, this red demon with glasses. Yes. And he's saying run, but Ned is there, and Rod, or Todd, and all the Sum Sums children, except for the baby. <laughs> all of them, except for one of the three. All of the Flanders children as well, except for Todd. And so, we get Mordy coming down as a flaming angel with a sword of fire and a shield and a halo. This is this is the mod we want to see, not that horrible skeleton mod we want to see. Brilliant mod. Let my boys go, she is shouting, and it looks like they're in hell. And this this demon, he's, it hurts his ears. She's shouting so loud. Yeah, and Ned's head is cold from all the angel wind. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I remember this one. This is from a Trios of Horror. That rod's great, isn't it? Great, right. Uh, and they would, Trios of Horror is where they started being more artistically experimental first, I think. It got more like this. And yes, Rod and Todd basically turn into Rod and Todd Hobgoblin in this. Is that where we got the idea from? No, I believe you just introduced Hobgoblins. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was unclear as to why the hobgoblins came in here. Yeah. It just it's unclear why most of the things came in. How's the how's the taxi going, Chris Jagger? It's great. Ba -ba 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 but yeah, no, she's this is the powerful mod that 
we uh if anything this is what we've always wanted this is the mod that the mod cast has been bigging up for 300 episodes it's beautiful very she's very and it's also this is the um probably the only time she's the hero of the story she's coming oh, she... basically at the end of the story to you uh oh she's a she's a deus ex mordi mordina yes that's what i was just about to attempt to say but couldn't remember how to do the first bit i like the design and i like that her text is blue her text is blue and she comes down flaming sword no, and she says more and neddy says maud it's so good to see you again hello neddy i've missed you so much me too says maud now that's the kind of more that's this is the mod we want isn't it yeah this then, works well as a two-lander from the uh the one that we were the skeleton one this is oh, yeah. way more accurate as to how she would be look at her face or expression right and how little she has to say about things it's very mod hello neddy me too and that ned is great that's a great ned with his big back and more i want to know i want to know who drew this issue yeah how can you find that out i will find out right now probably maybe we should just get on with the show maybe yeah <laughs> Somebody. Wow, Homer Simpson ruins it by saying, wow, I've forgotten how hot, hot Maud was. I can't believe you put her behind you and started dating again so soon. And a very nervous uh, Neddy says, Homer. Look at the yeah. shit-eating grin on Homer's face. So. Just that sort of, they needed to throw something in where Homer was Joker. tasteless to Maud. Yeah, and that's all they really, uh, that's all they've really got on her. Is it, you know, base level bongo here. B L. Like, oh, I'm a like mod. I remember that from the show. So you're seeing someone, says we have a classic back of the shadow mod. No, no, yes, no one in particular. So there's more than one, she says. This is righteous indignation. No, yes, I mean, and then she just does one. Listen, I can't be here right now, but goodbye, Ned, leaving him to the fiery flames of hell. That's kind of harsh, and I do like the once, once mod is angry in this situation, we don't see her, like, she's all silly. Yes. And I do like that back silhouette and that flying silhouette. And it uh, does I... rob us of an angry mod, which would be good to see. It would, especially in this style. But she's, um, again, I, I think this is sort of doing her a bit of a disservice. She wouldn't be that bothered. It's been like years. She, she sort of actively, we've established, wouldn't mind him moving on. And also, he didn't say bye to her children. No, this is not really... I think they kind of lost the maudiness. She would have said something like, Maud, uh, itching. Ned, I understand. It has been a while, and I've also been dating Robert Hope. Exactly. I have six of Robert Hope's angel children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Little Bobby Hope. Little Bobby Hope Flanders. Little Bobby Hope Flanders Goodman Jr. too. Yes, in the cold open. That's it for, uh, that's the mod. That's all the mods bongoed up for this. Except for this episode. last panel, where, where it's some kind of ghostly Bart is pulling on Bongo Homer's sleeve. Great Bongo Homer. Thanks a lot, Homer, says Angry Ned. Hey, I didn't force you back into the dating scene. Yes, you did. Kind of did, but he also kind of didn't, right? You forgot to wrap things up to Jesus H. Christ, boys. She's not in the last panel. It's just Ned whinging. She's gone done and left him. Homer kind of did and didn't put Ned on the dating scene, but more actively said, he did directly do that at least twice. Then Marge had a crack at some point. Anyway, Bongo over, get back to the fucking mountains then. But um, <laughs> uh, as we climb up this penultimate knot mountain <laughs> of the Zinakis range, oh look who it isn't, it's TV gardener Marsh Titch, aka Titch Marsh Allen. Hi other gardener, what are you doing here? I'm just about to get strapped into our occupus. I'm just here oh, for fun. Cool. I signed up on an internet dating site. Allen Titch Marsh. Master of Ocrypus. Well, we've officially run out of mates. We've got no friends now. We've, we, it's just us, Rod Hobgoblin and Jin from Lost and Snaggy. What, what happened to uh, Flimsy and Nightshade? Oh, and those two. We're still, oh, yeah, I'm still here. Oh, we're well. still here. Yeah, we're still here. We're not having any mountains. Oh, no, no, God, no. We wouldn't do that to friends, would we? No, we wouldn't. No, it would change the whole story. Change the whole story. It'd be too much work. Let's give the next set to, to random celebrities.
Hellboy, you get strategy climbing. No complaints from me. Hellboy, master of strategy. ST slash 48. Let's give this one to Karen Gillen and her cat cafe. Can I keep the cat is in she? Oh, yes. can, I, can I keep my cat cafe on the side of this saddle too? Yeah, we've got a giant saddle for you, Karen. You are good to me the night. <laughs> Karen Gillen and her cat cafe. Master of ST 48. I think we already looked at uh, this bongo, right? Yeah, I think we finished the bongos. Bongo complete. And so that just means, um, oh, it's time for a diary, I think, while we have a rest. Yes. <clears throat> Dear diary. <laughs> Forgot what bongos we looked at. <laughs> already. I mean, that was the only one I could remember. <laughs> Dear diary, I've got it. I'm a skeleton now. All of a sudden, that's right, I'm alive again. I was peacefully resting in this Aladdin universe comic universe and now I've just been thrust back into a labor club and there's crossies everywhere dancing and I'm I don't have any skin and I'm irritable about that. Uh, Ned doesn't seem to understand what the problem is for some reason and he's just getting he's getting under my bones. So I am um, I I was worried that I looked fat for some reason, even though I'm just bones and I never cared anyway. But Ned said I wasn't, but again, I don't trust the word he says anymore. So I'm going to leave him. I'm going to live a new skeleton life, um, haunting those kids from Scooby-Doo. So I'm going to go and do that now. Um, oh, I've lost my head. That's chopped my head off. Oh, no more dreams for Maud. The end. <laughs> Bye. That's brilliant. Oh, and also, I have a super baby. <laughs> and I'm an angel. And I'm an angel. <laughs> oh, well, that was a... That was a... Um, a very faithful retelling of one of the bongo. <laughs> Strip. Uh, it's almost like Maud was there. She stuck to the uh, the lines this very, week. Very strictly to the to the actual panel by panel description of the story. So well no, done. No real sort of additional information. No, this week it, she just kept it straight. There was no abusive language. There was no threat, um, and she didn't really say anything bad about Helen, which is unusual. So that's good for me. That's yeah. good for me then. <laughs> The night. Maybe Helen doesn't exist in this uh, Bongo Aladdin trilogy. Bongo Separate. Aladdin trilogy. B.A.T. Exactly. Well, we still have a lot of mountains under let's climb. Let's climb these last few mountains. But um, there'll be no, um, normally when you shout from the top of a mountain, you get an echo. But this one's got a Mr. Echo with Adiwale Akinoyu Agbaje. Excellent. echo -cellent. It's not a mistake. Ikatides for ST48, John. No. Triple A. Master of Hikatides. Hikatides. walk into the next one. Oh, we've come to the final mountain knot of well, there's only the only person left that I can possibly get is Selena S. Titties. Yes, she's on 15 drag race competitor. <laughs> I'll have to ring her because she's not here. It seems like hello, it seems like you're the last 
person that we know, would you like <laughs> to jump into a saddle off of a tiny mountain, big mountain, uh, in the Wii U Principality and stay here forever? What's that? Selena S. Titties? <laughs> Oh, thanks, Selena. No, it's the, the, the saddle's just a normal shape. Sorry, Hecatides is gone. You can only have a crafter. Selena S. Titties. Selena S. Titties. Master of a crater. Crater it is, and so that just means... Oh, that means we still have to... All these mountains have nothing to defend them, so I really hope nothing bad happens um, as we crawl across Eridanos. Emprentes John Chiaz Lichens Alax Kekrops Definitely all Pokemon names, right? Atta Chuarakemsu Hudinoidi Roy That one came to stay Mosaics Koironoi Lulkos and Voil of Wile. All remain undefensed, I repeat, undefensed. But enough of that, we've managed to cross the entire mountain range. That probably took about 45 minutes. At least. At least, but now all of our friends have been taken care of, except for who have we still got? The Hobgoblins, Flimsy Rosewater, you and me. The Hobgoblins are gone, while well, we have Rod. Rod, Flimsy, Lawrence, Snaggy and Jim from Loss. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here but what I can see, what I can see, I can only see the palace of bleeding Zanakis. But who's coming out to meet us? It's Jan, X Man Zanakis. He's got a, a, a junior, junior. I think it's Zanakis's vampire child. He's coming out. Oh my goodness. But I am. He's fine. It looks like Carl, he's got a fellow with helicopters and it says Carl Heinz 57 Stockhausen on the side. Yes, that's right, bitches. I'm going to fly my helicopter and chop your nugs off. That's quite a, them. quite a threat. Who are those little ones over there? That's Ant, Burke and Deck, Veyburn, Little yeah. Stevie Reich and the Glassmon. I tell you what, why don't Debord for call Bo Boudoir and Kerry Dera to come down from their mountains and uh, get in there, get in there against them. I don't, I don't think Debord for call and... Uh... Rambo didn't get a mountain, and we f I think Pierre Boudoir we forgot about since like season seven. <laughs> since he, he blamed COVID on. Oh, on the yeah, he's not been with this group for a long time. Since he said COVID was. Over the hills and was uh, okay. Yes. Downgraded to. Oh, on the Which is yeah. a fact. It's a fact, YouTube. That's a fact. It is. That Jesus Christ is born. Um, oh, well... And we have nothing more to say on that matter. Well, it looks like it's really just Kerry Derrida. And Terrence... I think it's everybody, isn't everybody but Kerry Derrida? <laughs> and Terrence Foucault. Get in there. There's a big philosopher fight going on now. Oh, my God. Dockhausen's run off in his helicopter, and the glassman's gone with him to tell Zanakis, but the rest of them are all dead. Oh, God, another another tragedy. Did you put some fighting sounds in there? Yeah. What about um, some last words from these philosophers? Yeah. Debord, what have you got to say? I'm debord of this. Just as early industrial capitalism moved the focus of existence from being to having, post-industrial culture has moved that focus from having to appearing. It's a, it's a bit... <laughs> what about you, Michelle Foucault? I'm not a complicated girl, she laughed. I just want to run away with you, rob a bank, fall in love and eat ice cream in Paris. I'm not a complicated girl. I laughed. I just want to run away with you, rob a bank, fall in love and eat ice cream in Paris. Ugh. What about you, Rambo? Only if you learn to glow like your Auntie Carol. Ugh. What about you, Pierre Boudoir? The point of my work was to show that culture and education aren't simply hobbies or minor influences. <laughs> Oh, and finally, the the saddest of all, we finally lost Kerry Derrida again. <laughs> She's not actually called Kerry Derrida. 
<laughs> the weather plays a massive effect on me. I spent a lot of I spent a lot of my life in the back of cars. Oops, I didn't mean that way. It sounded like hence the two kids. So clearly, you did. <laughs> oh, hold on. Phil Colin and Rambo have survived, so they've run off, and they've they're hanging on the bottom of Stockhausen's helicopter as he flies away. That was all a bit confusing, wasn't it? Why don't we have a bit of a rest and um, have a look at that art? Let's do it. Let's Funko rest in peace, everybody. We have Wave Six's two pack. Chuckle. <laughs> Uh, this is a I've just sort of a mixed bag really. It's I thought it was gonna be a salt circle special, but it's not. The two pack is the two pack is Baroness Berry the Veil and uh, Commander Darren Spider. I think that Commander Darren Spider might be one of the worst Funkos we have. It's very bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Doesn't represent the Commander Darren Spider that we know and like. I wouldn't say love. And then these solo ones. The Berry the Veil is very good though. That's very Oh cute. yeah, it's cool. I like the uh, the flow of purple. Uh, she needed a monocle though, and again, it just it won't. It'll do glasses, and that's the end. But it's somebody did give the spider different coloured eyes actually. Yeah, I'm not sure because yeah. you didn't ask for it. No, that's why. And then we got vivacious, which is kind of all right. Could be better. I, I think that little purple thing, that pink thing on her head, is maybe ornacea. That's not worked out. Um, it's hard to describe what an ornacea is though to a <laughs> chatbot image creator. Same with Lady John Ham. It's quite generic it's no just dynamite a, legs it's just a woman she has red legs that's the closest we could get ah and uh fu cheng is okay fu cheng looks like he means business it is so he means to lose business <laughs> 400 million dollars worth of it he's just a, a businessman in a suit isn't he with glasses on there's nothing it's all, very it's all he ever wanted to be yes he's on, it's, it's very on the nose but it's not bad he's not bad and I, would, I would purchase five ashes i think just no very the veil very the veil is the one i'm going for yeah actually yeah sorry viv about this cat, Karen. Find down in spider. <laughs> oh, go pop variation. It's okay. It is okay, isn't it? It's a day for okays, but look, oh, the mist and thunder, and again, oh, the last five times, four times that's happened, it's it's not, it's not, it's gone bad for whoever is there, but who is it today? It's the guardian of the first mountain, Rolly Fingers. Uh oh. <laughs> Rolly Fingers, the renowned baseball player, walked into the dimly lit chamber where Zanakis, the vampire king, sat on his throne. The doors burst open as Rolly entered, holding up his baseball bat. What do you want, mortal? Zanakis growled, his eyes narrowed in anger. Rolly seemed undaunted by the vampire's menacing gaze. I've come to challenge you, Zanakis, he said. I've heard that you are the greatest athlete in all the land, and I want to see if I can beat you at your own game. Zanakis let out a cold laugh. You think you can defeat me with your puny human sport? Very well. Let's see what you've got. The Vampire King stood up and unsheathed his bat, a magical bat that was said to have the power to control the very elements themselves. He began to hit fast and furious baseballs that sent shivers down Rolly's spine. But Rolly was not about to be outdone. He began to hit his baseballs, the deep, thumping sound echoing through the room. The two athletes faced off, each trying to outdo the other with their skills and talent. As the battle raged on, Zanakis began to grow frustrated. He had always been the greatest athlete in the land, and he was not about to be bested by a mere mortal. In a fit of rage, he unleashed a powerful baseball that hit Rolly's bat, breaking it and throwing him off balance. Rolly's eyes widened in fear as the ball hit him, causing him to fall to the ground. Humiliated and defeated, Rolly stumbled backwards, unconscious. The other vampires in the room watched in shock as Rolly's body hit the ground with a sickening thud. As the dust settled, the vampires looked at each other with wide eyes, wondering what had just happened. They had never seen anyone best Zanakis in a sports battle, and the sight of Rolly's fallen body was a shocking reminder of the Vampire King's power. Yes way Onion said. Shut up said Zanakis. Uh oh. What does it mean when a mountain doesn't have a guardian? I don't know but we've, we've already... Four of, the, four of our mountain guardians were already dead. Yeah, it's not we working out. like 17 unprotected. Pretty shoddy job all in all. Yeah, let's just get out of here quickly. Let's just leave this mountain range. Yeah, I imagine those mountains that are not tamed are probably going to fight against the ones that are at some point in some kind of giant mountain kaiju battle. It's very, very likely. <laughs> season 12. Highly, probably season 9, episode 6. Yes, way. Oh, oh, that didn't go well. Rolly Fingers is dead now. Yes, way. So that's again, that's another mountain undefended. We got time for a diary? Yeah, another one. <laughs> yeah, why not? We do. 
Here are 10 things that I like. Dear Diary, volunteering at the Springfield Community Centre. Hang on, these aren't very good. No, no, it's, no, it's one messaging at a time. Let me just, re let me just report chat bot. Here are 10 silly things that I might enjoy doing. Dear Diary, doing cartwheels in my front yard, dressing as a clown for Halloween, singing karaoke to 80s power ballads, making homemade snow cones, no cones, playing hopscotch with the neighbourhood kids, trying to solve a Rubik's Cube, making silly faces in the mirror, having a pillow fight with my husband Ned, doing the hokey pokey with my church group, making animal noises just for fun. Yeah. One moment. Here are 10 silly things I do not enjoy. Watching itchy and scratchy cartoons, eating sugary unhealthy snacks like candy bars and ice cream, wearing flashy or revealing clothing, dancing at a wild party, playing video games for hours on end, Watching horror movies or anything with excessive violence. Using curse words or vulgar language. Going on thrill rides at an amusement park. Participating in a food fight. Engaging in any form of gambling or taking risks with money. The end, Helen's a bitch. Ned, you did call, they think it was a, a form of gambling, but she didn't. She well, did she, not. She bought insurance. That was a bit more re revelatory. Some things that, she, some silly things she liked to do, some silly things that she definitely did not like to do. Do we have time for a song? Yes. The whole show is at Cubic Town. None of that. I just want my wife back just as she is. Aladdin. There you go. One wife as is. Okay, 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 okay. No one else at all. But. What's all this? Is this how you're raising your children? Aladdin. That's a bikini cage. She'd be neat to have her own on Halloween if we celebrated it. Oh, sorry, lady. Oh, dear. Oh, lady. I wish we had a baby. Building a crib, those Swedish instructions are so complicated, and what the heck's an Allen wrench? Did we even do this page? I don't think we even looked at that page. No, I don't. I don't remember any of that. Well, it's nice. It's nice to know that she wanted a baby. We didn't, I don't think we read either of these two pages, did we? We did that one. I remember Zagnut. I remember the page after. We definitely didn't do the page with the Allen wrench, though. We did that page. Oh, yeah, we did. And we did that one. Fast down Zagnut. No, no, that. Why do I always have the long talk? The holy light. Me too. Hello, Mickey. Goodbye, Ned. Thanks a lot, Homer. Sense the violence. The end. Randy Jackson Bass. We had we achieved the uh, completion of this, but what's um? Who's that stumbling out of those trees? Others. 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 I don't oh, know where Jane. I don't know where I am or why been, I am, why I is. You've been with us for quite some time, Jim. You've been with uh... us for a little bit. Others. As I sit here, atop the peak of Mountain Chalk, I cannot help but reflect on the strange journey that has led me to this point. I was once a simple tortoise, living out my days in the care of my owner, the postmodern philosopher Mickey Foucault, but fate had other plans for me. It all started when that foul-mouthed Scottish parrot. I still remember the terror as I felt it swoop down and take my head clean off. But somehow I remained conscious, aware of my surroundings even as my body lay lifeless on the ground. And then the next thing I knew, I found myself named as the eternal guardian of this mountain. It is a strange existence to be sure. I no longer have a body to call my own, but I am somehow still here, watching over this place, and I often wonder what it all means. Is there a purpose to my existence? Or am I simply a random collection of atoms adrift in an indifferent universe? And yet, despite the uncertainty and strangeness of my situation, I find myself feeling oddly at peace, 
perhaps it is the beauty of the mountain, the way the sunlight dances across the rocks and the wind whispers through the trees, or perhaps it is the knowledge that I am fulfilling some kind of duty, protecting this place from harm. As for the future, who can say, will I remain here for all eternity, watching over this mountain as ages pass me by? Or will some other fate befall me, some new adventure that I cannot even imagine? I do not know. But whatever comes, I will face it with the same stoic determination that Mickey taught me, and I have carried through all my strange and wondrous experiences. For I am Terence Fukal, the eternal guardian of the mountain troll. And even if my body has been taken from me, I will continue to fulfill my duty for as long as I am able. It has been 100 years since I was first named the eternal guardian of this mountain, and yet here I am, still bound to this saddle, still watching over the same rocky peaks and twisting valleys. I have had plenty of time to think, to, p to ponder the very nature of my existence and the meaning of my duty. At times it feels like a kind of purgatory, a never-ending cycle of day and night, sun and rain, snow and wind, and yet there is a kind of beauty to it as well. The mountain changes subtly, but surely over the decades and centuries. New plants grow, old ones wither away. Rocks crumble into dust while new formations emerge from the earth. And so I have come to see my duty not as a burden, but as a privilege to bear witness to the slow eternal dance of nature. To be part of this mountain in a way that no living being ever could. Of course, there are times when I wonder what might have been. What kind of life I might have led if that cursed parrot had not taken my head. But those thoughts are fleeting, for here, atop this mountain, I have found a kind of meditative peace. I could never have imagined in my previous busy life with French postmodernist philosopher Mickey Foucault. As for the future, well, I suppose I have no choice but to continue on in this way. Perhaps one day someone will come and release me from this saddle, but until then, I will continue to fulfill my duty. Watch over this mountain and all that it contains. Who knows? Perhaps in another hundred years I will look back on this mountain moment and feel grateful for the experience and insights that this strange existence has brought me. You are good to be like. For now, I, Terence Foucault, will simply continue to be the guardian of the mountain troke and let the rest unfold as it will.